So oftentimes people have different ideas for things to do as alternative history and Hearts of Iron. I mean, you can just look at the, the Steam workshop page for Hearts of Iron and see 528 pages of stuff. Perhaps not all as legitimate as each other relating to alternative history. However, we are not all computer hacker nerds. And in fact, a lot of us are actually a little bit stupid. So that begs the question, how does a normal person mod this game? Well, it's not that hard. You'll need a few mods listed on screen in the ocean. Once you have those mods, you can go here to look at tool pack and it'll bring up this uh, two part menu. You're gonna be sticking to the first part more often than not. Now you have a few tools here. We'll start with the state managing tool. And uh, I may have clicked it, but it doesn't look like anything just happened. That's why you gotta click on a state. Once you do that, you'll have what looks like a, uh, a souped up version of the straight transfer tool. Basically, you can mark states. You can transfer them around. You can make them cores of countries. And you can give countries claims on them. This is apparently the most desired province in all history. You can set it to be the capital of countries, which sometimes takes reloading a save. And if you've marked too much stuff, instead of transferring it over like an idiot, you can clear all marks. There are things you can do like marking the cores of states or uh, countries, marking the colonies of countries, marking the occupied states of countries. You can transfer the control of certain territories, which means that, uh, given any time whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it's gone. It doesn't work like that. But if they were at war, which you can also do, I'll get to that later. They, it would not be like that. Now here you can demilitarize states. The wasteland of Wales, well understood to be illegal to put military units in. And you can also remilitarize states. <laughs> Take that, Versailles. Let's move on to the next one. Country annexing tool, which may seem redundant given there's a state management tool, but it allows you to do something cool where you can transfer armies and navies as well. I don't know. How it, also, apparently, you could just transfer navies. So if I wanted to, I could take the British Navy and say, you know what? That belongs to you, my sweet child, Liberia. And tag over to Liberia, let's see if that worked. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. But more importantly, you can do things, for example, um, like, let's tag over to Persia here. And what you can do is grab Iraq, let's just say Iraq, and Afghanistan, and when I annex them now, I have the divisions. Yes. Now, we also have coring here, um, but I'm fairly certain you could infer what that would do, so let's move on. Uh, we also have the country puppeting tool. So the country puppeting tool... Not only does it let you make other countries into puppets, it lets you determine what kinds of puppets. Um, and then furthermore, it will change based on if they're Japanese. That's racist. Um, but it's also how it is. And it will let you change their autonomy. And you can free countries. Uh, give it a second. I, I do think their cosmetic tag changes in a minute or two. Or not. Next, you have the politics tool. The politics tool is um is pretty multifaceted, so pay attention. You can enable or disable elections. We've just turned off their elections. I think you got to reload the save for that to work, or is it that you got it? Well, I, I don't know. Sometimes tool pack just kind of breaks. There are fixes for it somewhere in the workshop, but I'm not going there. You can set it so that a country is kept a certain ideology. 
So let's do that for Spain. They will now go communist instantly. Because that makes sense. Furthermore, you can change their ideology to whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can add a certain amounts of points to ideologies. But of course, uh, in this case, that won't work because I already have the national spirit added. Um, now, you can also go to the diplomacy tab and have countries guarantee countries. So let's say France wanted to guarantee Bulgaria. Cool. And it doesn't have to worry about these restrictions. See how it says they're too powerful compared to us? Well, it doesn't matter because we can guarantee them anyway. This makes sense. Non-aggression pact can be set up. Uh, you can have military access added. But only one way for some reason. I, I don't know. Just tag between them, do, do the commands and all that. That'll probably work. You can also add opinion modifiers. So now Turkey, uh, Romania should collect Turkey a lot. Or the other way around, you just couldn't see it until we tagged Romania. You can go to Stance and have, let's say, Greece creates a faction. There are some already existing names, but uh, that's where another mod comes in there for later. Let's say Greece creates a faction. They can also dismantle that faction. Um, you can also keep pressing it to go through the stock names. You can add countries to this alliance. This does not make sense. You can have them leave factions. You can even go as far as to make countries leaders of factions. Or you could dismantle every faction. You can cause civil wars. And if you hold shift, you can choose their ideology. You can also have them make truces and declare wars. You can even make peace agreements between countries. Now, Division Spawning Tool A, it's bare bones, but it works. You just say you want motorized, armored, cavalry, infantry, how many battalions in this division, um, and then you spawn as many as you'd like. You can also go in and delete every division with five infantry uh, battalions in it. Bye bye, India. And division spawning tool B is a little bit more interesting because it lets you create templates. It lets you give army your experience. Let's get some army experience. And it'll create this template called crack unit, which you can then modify. So right now, if we made a crack unit, you can add as much experience or equipment as you'd like. We'll make one now. One of these crack units. And its template is this. But if we created a new template, crack unit type 2, you can see it starts as the same template, but we can add differences to it. And if we were to spawn it in, same stuff. You can spawn even multiple types at once. We'll see here you have the weird one, and you have the regular one. You can also remove all army air experience, all that. You can have as many as three of these crack unit templates. Ship spawning tool, it's as simple as it comes. You can spawn in ships. Convoys too. Yes, that's a lot of convoys. It just gives you the base of these, I do believe. You can add naval experience and all. For building, you can add, subtract as many buildings as you want. Add ports to, uh, to coastal provinces, even up to max level, in one click. For forts, you can do a little bit of trolling when you decide to go hmm, minimum. No imagino. With nuclear reactors, you could 
creating horrors beyond man's comprehension. You can even mark every state and make man-made horrors beyond comprehension. You can add rocket silos, even. Oil, all this. Hell, you could even go like this and say no factories and no factories. Don't need them. After that, you have manpower management tool, which is literally just the manpower command in a tool. I wonder if we can underflow it. It sure underflows a counter there. Ah, amazing. Now you also have the population management tool. Let's say you wanted to make Tibet the population capital of the world. Well, now it is. Actually, I think there are a few more states with more population than that. Like, for example, this one. We're going to have a lot of clicking to do. You can change the variable as well. So when you go here, keep on adding. I actually have no idea what those variables do, to be honest with you. And you can also do <laughs> man made orders beyond our comprehension. Yes. Man made horrors beyond our comprehension. <laughs> and finally, you have the resource management tool when you realize that Europe has more resources than Africa. And that totally makes sense. Here, let me just let me just do something to unbias this game, where I just go like this, right? And I say, wait a minute, Europe sucks. Your pro-European bias is retarded. And this is this makes literally a thousand percent more sense. Like this makes no sense right here, and it still makes more sense than Europe being richer than Africa and material wealth. Now it will take a reload of saves, I do believe, for you to be able to see a lot of what I just did. But trust me, it is there. I think. But that's not the only thing we can do. We also have uh, decisions to choose leaders. For example, if we wanted to go to the United States, we could go as far as to make uh, you the leader. But it doesn't just stop there. Because we can also take other countries' uh, leaders. You. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, I think I did cause some problems by killing <laughs> like, <laughs> all the ships. <laughs> <coughs> yes, so now we have the true leader of the United States. In fact, we can even give him traits. Apparent, you know, as it turns out, he's actually an elected regency council. Yes. And furthermore, we don't just have to stop there. We can give him a different focus tree. This is the American focus tree that we've all been waiting for. Yes, this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense, of course. Let's just go ahead and, um, oh, what? I can't do this? Oh, I can. Yes, so this truly is Poland. This makes sense. By a lot. Alright. 
And I should also refer you to a few good resources. Now this one's a tad more complex, so you might want to be a, a bit ready to go on ahead and um, and bookmark this like I have. What you'll need to do is you'll need to go to your Steam program files, you know, this PC, local disk C, program files, x86, go to Steam, Steam apps, you'll want to go to Common, then find Hearts of Iron 4, and after that you'll be going to localization, then to in ooh, English, and here you'll find some very good resources like uh, Countries, Countries Cosmetic, um, you'll find events, you'll find game rules, all that stuff, you'll find what you need to find in here. For instance, you can find um, all the base events you might want to use here, like let's go and we'll find this one here, the second Vienna Award. And now we can open the console, type event. Hungary, and now you'll, you will have to do a few things. Like, I copied and pasted it like this, just remove the dot T. So yeah, you can, you can trigger all sorts of things. Bottom line is, um, that's how you do it. Also, go to the Hearts of Iron Wiki to learn the, um, the commands here. Like, for example, uh, here's one that won't actually carry between saves, but it's cool. Tag color. And then you just RGB it. Let's say we want 241, uh, 27, and 85. This makes sense. And with all that said, that's how you would go about making that.